evening. Once again, it's time for Frankenstein Makes a Sandwich and other stories you're sure to like because they're all about monsters and some of them are also about food. You like food, don't you? Well, all right then. So this one is Count Dracula doesn't know he's been walking around all night with spinach in his teeth. Now look at the picture here. I love Dracula. He's like, he's got it going on. The other, the pumpkin head, the headless horseman, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. He's looking at him like, psh, what's going on with this guy? Like he's never had anything in his teeth. And everyone's talking. They're all so shocked and amazed. Anyways, who cares? Those, those people, those people don't matter. Those monsters don't matter. Dracula, he's got it going on. But they're all judgy. And here's a judgy poem about Dracula with spinach in his teeth. Will someone please just tell him? It looks so undignified. The zombies almost mentioned it. The headless horseman tried. But when he said, What are you staring at? They lost their nerve and lied. It's been stuck in there for hours now. It's getting kind of sick. I would offer him a toothpick, but he gets this nervous tick if you ever to come too close with any kind of pointed stick. Well, really, can you blame us if we don't know what to say? His castle has no mirrors, so I guess it's there to stay. What was a vampire doing eating spinach, anyway? Yeah, that's a little judgy. Who cares? Just, just, we'll move on. We'll move on to The Mummy Won't Go to His Eternal Rest Without a Story and Some Cookies. And I know you kids have pulled this one. <laughs> Don't tell me you haven't. You have. Don't want to go to sleep until you have a snack, or you want some water, or whatever it is. This one goes straight out to you. There's a place in France where the naked ladies dance, but when King Tut died, he wore bandages for pants. And he'll never, never go to sleep. No, he will never, never go to sleep. Oh, it's time for bed, all the royal servants said. Mummy played on the floor, and he wailed five minutes more. Here's his new excuse, he wants cookies with his juice. But he won't get far, that's his stomach in a jar. Now he wants to read, so the scribes must do the deed. They make groaning sounds, cause the books weigh 30 pounds. And they said, you're dead, so you have to go to bed. But he runs through the tombs, and he hides in secret rooms. Nyeh, 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 nyeh. My kids ever tried that, I would talk to them sternly, and then they would go to bed, like I told them to. <clears throat> Moving on. The last one is, the Yeti doesn't appreciate being called Bigfoot. Did you just say Bigfoot? What's wrong with your eyes? My feet aren't remotely as big as that guy's. Nor are they as smelly, you see, here's the truth. Some folks call him Sasquatch. His real name is Ruth. So then why is Bigfoot the name people mention? The smell, not the size, is what gets their attention. His nose is big too, but does anyone care? Perhaps if they smelled, they would be more aware. Well, of course his nose smells, but you know what I meant. You can bet he's no yeti by way of his scent. I'm pretty sure that Sasquatch is a dad because dads stink. All right, that is the end. And I'm pretty sure the Phantom of the Opera is kicking around here somewhere, going slowly insane. But that'll be for another time. All right, sleep well. All around the opera house, the phantom throws a tantrum. The song won't die. He doesn't know why. Stop! Goes the phantom. Cut scene. Drop the book. Wake up the kids. <laughs>